Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Post-fight reviews for five heavyweight fights, four on the same card, which was in Germany. This was a Universum card. It also will cover off Nick Campbell at the end. He was fighting on a Sky Sports show held by Boxer. But first, to the main event in the Germany card, which was Universum Box Promotion. So this is all on their YouTube channel, Universum TV. Main event, you had Zahn Kosowitzki defending his WBC International Silver Heavyweight title, bit of a mouthful, against Alexis Garcia. So both these guys unbeaten heading into this one. Garcia hadn't really seen too much of him, but he had been coming off an upset win in 2020, which was against Amron Sands. So clearly he had something about him, but Zahn Kosovutsky is a talent. And again, he proved so in this fight. It was pretty evident from about the first 10 or 15 seconds that Kosovutsky knew what was in front of him and knew what he had to do, which was basically, you know, use that stiff jab. And he does have a lot of pop on that jab. He was placing body shots. He was trying to be the boss and come forward and put pressure on Garcia, who's a thick, heavy set guy. And clearly, probably in most of his fights so far in his career, he's used to being the one coming forward. And you could tell Zahn Kosobutsky, who was trying to impose his own physicality on the fight, force Garcia back. Alexis Garcia didn't like it. Didn't look good going backwards. Didn't look good just sort of winging away shots because Zahn Kosobutsky again in this fight showed that he's got really good reflexes you know shifting his weight just a, a touch it's moving his head one or two inches he made Garcia miss many times in this fight but it's one of these things with Zahn Kosobutsky it almost looks like he's sort of sleepwalking through the fight a little bit I mean I think his nickname should be cruise control because he never really got out of second gear on this one basically stepped it up a little bit into the fight but just sort of went through his work you know placing body shots and i gotta say he's probably one of the best guys in the heavyweight division to work on the inside because when he gets to the inside he's not just falling in he's not just trying to sort of tie up and just throw a banger shot to the body as you know you can imagine this in your head guys who sort of tie up and sort of bash the side of the body with one hand until the ref breaks them up none of that sort of stuff he's going to the inside to work so throwing short little uppercuts short little hooks placing body shots and i stress placing body shots he's pretty effective and garcia you could tell didn't like the the sort of battering to the body that he was getting across the first few rounds and by about round three towards the end of that garcia was looking pretty ragged he really wasn't having much success he was having the odd sort of wild looping sort of swinging shot but as i say kosobutsky moving his head just you know sort of dipping out of the way defensively he was pretty good in this fight garcia having the odd success to the body because that was the obviously a bigger target to hit but apart from that not much coming back at Kosobutsky that was having any real impact or effect on the Kazakh. So we start to get to um, round four here and a very good body shot, just beautiful shot to the body, left hand, and it drops Alexis Garcia. Round five and a bit of a soft stoppage actually because the writing was on the wall. Garcia was certainly was fading. Um, he was clipped with a couple of shots. It was just a bit of a flurry. Kosobutsky threw five or six shots together. Nothing was like huge, but obviously Garcia was a little shaken up. The referee sort of straight in waves it off. And watching it live, I thought, oh, this is quite premature. I was expecting the end to come in the next round or two, but it was all over very quickly. But Alexis Garcia, he didn't complain. And then when the, they showed the replay, there was one or two that shots that did sort of get in there and have a bit of an effect. But it's one of these things. Zahn kosobutsky has got that sort of underrated power he's a very heavy handed and he doesn't have to land something you know huge and for it not to hurt sort of you know he's landing some of these shots and they're having a bigger toll than you think when you're watching it live um garcia sort of you know taken back to his corner and you know he had to have a couple of minutes just to sort of recover properly but um so stopped on his feet here but zan remains unbeaten defends the wbc international silver heavyweight title 
decent performance but let's face it you've had a couple of fights like this at sort of a similar level the last two or three fights now he needs to step up 32 years old he needs um, universum to stick their hand in their pocket and get him a christian hammer get him a carlos to calm that sort of caliber that level of fight he's well and truly ready for a test of that nature so the rest of the card I'll just quickly get to sort of a minute or two per fight. Um, gotta say, if you're a Senad Gashi fan, if any of those actually exist, may want to tune out now because uh, gonna go on on him because he probably put on one of the worst performances I've seen in recent memory. Uh, to the co-main event, which was uh, Jose Ladaway. This was against Leandro Daniel Robuti. And I had thought I'd seen Robuti before and, I, and he had fought Vladislav Serenko a couple of years ago. And just like this fight, um, and that one was Serenko. He just basically came to fight, let his hands go. He was trying to put it on Ladaway early on, and you could tell Ladaway was a little bit surprised by the aggression in the first opening 10 or 20 seconds. He did get sort of clipped by a couple of shots. Nothing major. He wasn't hurt or anything like that. But it was an interesting um, start to the fight because clearly it wasn't something Ladaway was expecting. But after that first round, you know, the very aggressive round where there was a lot of decent trading and even some good trading in round two, just basically both letting their hands go. A big right rocks Roboti, and then um, Ladaway follows up with another right hand, and basically he's out on his feet. The ropes are holding him up, and it's all over. So it was fun while it lasted, but you could see there was a clear sort of skill gap in terms of um, just the general polish on their game. But Robati, he was game, he came to fight, but obviously came off second best. He got a lot of opportunities to Ladaway to counter, and certainly he took advantage of them in the end. So Jose Ladaway, who used to fight Frank Sanchez in the amateurs and had a few wins over him, he looks okay, but it's really hard to tell against this level of opposition because... It's just a, a tough guy who likes to let his hands go, um, Daniel, uh, Leandro Daniel Robati. Nothing special. And it was clear to see that had this been just a pure boxing match, he was going to get sort of schooled. But more entertaining, this sort of fight, especially after the rest of the dross on the card, it wasn't great. The other um, heavyweight fight before this, or a couple of fights before this, um, number of fights on the card overall, four heavyweight fights just getting to it now so you had the french heavyweight murad aliev so he was facing herman skobenko and i sort of thought he was looking okay murad aliev so olympian he was the guy that fought fraser clark um disqualified so he's a southpaw about six foot six put his punches together well in spots but just something was lacking he certainly seems to be a little light on the power side. I mean, this guy, sure, he was somewhat durable, but he was there for the taking. There were moments in this fight where I thought actually Skabenko looked like he was ready to quit. But ultimately, um, Murad Aliyev just wasn't able to sort of, you know, put it on him enough. Um, the first round or two, it sort of seemed like, okay, he's starting to break him down. But nice one, too. He looked fluid at times. But he just kind of went off the boil a little bit and it just ended up being more of the same round after round ultimately for the entire four rounds. So don't know what to think about Aliyev so far and his sort of prospects as a pro, but it was an okay performance. But certainly his guard keeps those hands relatively low, that chin certainly hanging it out there and also very sort of upright and a bit stiff at times. But then other times he sort of put his punches together quite fluidly. So, yeah, it was a bit of a sort of mixed bag. Um, gets a decision for his uh, first pro fight. Generally, you want to see a prospect, especially one who's been Olympian, got a little bit of buzz. You, you're hoping that they might sort of starch their opponent. And I think Skabenko certainly was there to be starched. And the final fight on this card, just before we get to Nick Campbell, Senad Gashi. So clearly he must be on some decent contract and Universum just has to um, keep him fighting and keep paying Gashi because they buried him near the start of this card and justifiably so. So he was facing a guy who just looked happy to be there and who was happy to have survived the fight. This was absolutely dire. It was a six rounder. Senad Gashi came forward opening round, seemed to come out with some intent, tracking forward sort of pouring with the jab, trying to get to the uh, the inside, trying to get some work away. But the work never came. It just ended up being a case of he'd track forward, you know, pouring with the jab, he'd get into position to launch an attack, and nothing would come. 
90 percent of the times he was bailing on it he just sort of you know either back off or just throw some feints or allow his opponent gyro joaquin diaz to sort of escape out the back door and circle out it was just absolutely bizarre dire dire stuff and arguably Gashi was the one that took the biggest punches of the fight. Uh, there was a really nice shot that he was caught with in the fourth round. But ultimately, while there wasn't a lot landed here, I mean, you could probably say, what is it, 20 landed punches in the fight? I don't know. That, I'm not sure what the number is, but that's what it felt like. It was just absolute garbage. Um, I think Gashi certainly falls into this category of fighter that I'm not going to cover anymore because he's just digressed so much gone are the days of early senator gashi who at one point in time i think 13 fights 14 fights 14 knockouts something like that he used to just come forward was an all action all excitement machine but then when he finally stepped up to a better level um, above german domestic level he ended up having um, just zero success and he looked a bit scared against the likes of carlos to come derek chisora etc and since then he's been a bit of a broken man i don't know what if it's some sort of mental issue here in terms of not wanting to let his hands go but it, it was garbage absolutely garbage i'm not covering this this guy again because it was absolutely pathetic if you saw that uh you will have just felt like you wasted about half an hour of your life i mean i was questioning my life choices after watching this absolutely pathetic effort garbage centered gashi uppercut yourself that would be about the first punch you landed in the fight it was ridiculous anyway getting to nick campbell and i guess maybe this is going to continue the theme of it wasn't so great nick campbell was on this boxer sky sports card mid card of the main event and really that was a mistake because against phil williams and let's face it phil williams heading into this three and 33 journeyman he's had about was it 15 losses on the trot or something like that it's he's he's just we know what he is we've seen guys face him in recent times they're able to go in there and basically bulldoze him and stop him but you had nick campbell just looking really raw not looking good at all in there um he looked predictable and for a couple of rounds there phil williams was comfortably surviving sure he didn't come to throw a lot of shots williams but he could read what campbell was looking to do it just became too predictable and i bring up the thing about mid card because they need to be having nick campbell off tv for the moment because he only did himself and i think his image um, his profile harm because people would have been ex expecting you know to see a knockout or have you know in terms of a really dominant performance it's not quite what they got sure he ended up stopping williams um in that third round but until then it was pretty average stuff even bean was sort of um and matthew macklin were talking him down and sort of the effort that he put in and how raw he is how much work he needs and if they're having to do that so much backpedaling on it you know that it wasn't impressive it wasn't impressive at all and given that they had four fights that were off tv in a sort of before the show type segment including one fight that had natasha jonas in it maybe he should have been occupying one of those earlier slots and it's not to say that he can't improve and can't get better but it didn't it didn't do anything for him this was a showcase opportunity and it failed miserably at least in my view I think we're seeing and a couple of people have pointed this out as well you've got a lot of shows at the moment um, a lot of different promoters a lot of tv time or um you know, and via the internet apps etc stables are spread uh, spread thin but when you have guys coming in for an opportunity mid card again you know you've got a decent saturday night audience that's not what you wanted to see anyway we'll wrap it up there so uh, you know definitely there's some tools there to work with but i think they really need to go back to the drawing board and assess how they're pushing him because if they're going to sort of give him that sort of airtime, you expect better anyway what did you make of it all drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out